Hi everybody. Hi. We've got a whole lot of Walshy on the show today. Oh. Kate Walsh dropped by. She's amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Sean. Apparently, can you, she's amazing. Can you keep it below a whisper? Uh, below a whisper because yeah. it just sounds a bit. Uh, so you're good. married. Yeah. Um, uh, we uh, talk about big injuries uh, coming from um, uh, lame situations. Yes, like gaming, Nate. Like that gaming, was one of the Sean, situations. Like Tom Gleason joins us, talks about hard quiz. Yeah. Um, we heard about a bit of a job snob on maths last night, which led us to search for a particular profession, mm. and we found one. Mm. Yeah, and just a little bit of shenanigans and, and just some, you know, good old classic Tuesday fun. <laughs> <laughs> classic. You know, half price pasta. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. Season seven of Hard Quiz. It's back, everybody. And the star, of course, is Tom Gleeson. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Hi, Tom. Tom. Seven seasons. Wow. Tom. Seven's know. a lucky number. Never thought you'd make it. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it just keeps chugging along. It's, um, and it gets more and more popular. And obviously that's not going to happen forever. Yes. It's going to peak eventually. Um, but hopefully it peaks tonight because we're up against math. And I want to beat maths in the ratings. Yes. Because yes. I hate math. Yes. But good news. Yes. I've checked the ratings. Last night they had their worst ratings they've ever had since 2017. Oh, really? They might be in a bit of strife. Who, who, who did well against them then, Tom? Because obviously we had Survivor kicking off last night. Channel and 7 rolled out the voice. Well, I watch all this very closely. Math was still number one, but mm. it's the worst launch they've had since 2017. Right. I just want everybody to know that. Okay. Uh, so this is your chance to strike. But, Tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm going to strike. We beat the block once, and then they took... And then, anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> and then math, we are going to take them down on Wednesday night. <laughs> well, we're doing... Hey, Tom, just for your uh, information, we're doing a cross-promote at the moment with me. So <laughs> we might need to edit that part out. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> oh, we can't edit it. It's live, Sean. Oh, shit. Oh, awesome. Well, the yeah. boss is going to be wrapped oh, that's that one, fine. Tom. That's fine. <laughs> Just put us into a couple of well, meetings after the well, show. Thanks, Tom. Know, like, if you think about it, the ABC is taxpayer-funded. You all pay your taxes. That's a great point. The entire nation is locked in a cross-promotion that's right. hard quiz, whether they like it or not. <laughs> invested. <laughs> Reluctantly invested. Hey, Tom, I tried to introduce my dad to um, hard quiz over our, uh, over our Christmas break mm-hmm. um, because I um, – Dad was like talking about like uh, there was some bloody quiz show on. I think it was Beat the Chaser or something like that. Was yeah, on. yeah. And I said to Dad, oh, yeah. no, no, no. I said you've got to watch Hard Quiz. It's so good. And then I explained the premise to Dad, and it's not that hard a premise. No, it's mm. not. So for people that don't know Hard Quiz, right? You get four different people. Like, each person has their own specific um, expertise. Uh, expertise. So and it could be something like um, shoes worn in Emily. In Paris, yes, or, you know, or Lawrence of Arabia, which is yes. one of the ones tomorrow night. It, it can be so, it can be so niche, niche that only yep. you can know about it. So then you get uh, each person gets asked, um, you know, questions about their category, but someone else can jump in and answer questions yes. ahead of you, and then double the point. Hmm. Then you whittle them down. So I explained it to that dad. It couldn't be any simpler. Dad watched it and. You know when you realise your father's too stupid to get things? <laughs> hey, just that didn't. That was the moment you realised. He just didn't get it. And he was going, no, nah, this, is, this is rubbish. And I know it's not. It's no, bloody well. good, Dad. It's a gold logie winner. Well, it's tricky. It is a, it is a, it is, it's a challenging show. I know that. Like, I mean, maybe your father prefers hot seat. Hot seat <laughs> questions are really, really easy. I mean, on hot seat, hot seat they ask questions like, uh, which one of these is a primary colour? A, blue, B, chocolate, B, a house brick, D, the Galapagos Islands. <laughs> I don't know, Eddie, could I phone a friend? Hey, 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 hey Tom, hey, I would have got that wrong. One, one of our workmates <laughs> went on hot seat and got, she, she dipped out on a, on a question legitimately about sausages. <laughs> yeah, it was too. <laughs> yeah, it was well, too. you know what? Sausages could easily be an expert subject on our show. <laughs> it could be. That's what I love about it. Hey, Tom, I want to say uh, seven seasons. Um, have you been uh, asked to be able to take this show to, say, a commercial network where they're going to pay you really good dollars to do do this over the, over the time? Well, it's a bit tricky because I did do... Back when I was campaigning for the Logie, yes. I... Talked to Eddie Maguire on his radio show, and I promised him I would stop answering the phone from Channel Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I cannot disclose any offers that were made to replace hot seat. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey, what's been happening in your life lately? Tell us something. Give us the highlight. Uh, well, I'm, I'm well. I'm very excited to be back at work. I'm actually getting the live show ready to go. So we're yeah. doing hard quiz live around Australia. Yes. And per, it's, uh, are you coming over here. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh, you're coming, well, you're not going to be surprised. We're coming to Perth last. 
yes. because we're risk averse. <laughs> so in five years so time. We're going, to, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be coming to Perth in December, but we're starting in Canberra in March. So by the time we get to Perth, it'll be a very, very sharp show yes. if you'll let us in. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we'll be getting our mandated seventh jab by then. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be safe. Don't worry. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah. How many times have you, try, have you attempted to get into WA and be knocked back now? Oh, I only tried once. Just tried once. So I flew over. I had all the forms yeah, correct. You did. I was back. But everything was fine. But yeah, yeah they changed the rules mid air, which was lovely. Yeah. And um, so I landed, and they said you have to go back. There were some people <laughs> waiting and said we have to test you. I'm like, and I said to this bank of people, I said, no, you don't. You're sending me back. You're testing me to double. T-. Like you're not testing me. So I, I actually jumped under a barricade and ran to a cafe and had a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> <And nobody. laughs> I infected nobody. You know why? Because I didn't have the virus and I was vaccinated. Surprise, surprise. I flew back to Sydney. I spent the whole day on the plane. I drank about three bottles of Chardonnay, watched eight movies and was back where I'd started. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah. I'm not bitter about it, but I just want to say, Mark McGowan, if you're listening, you owe me a lot of money for those gigs I can. <laughs> well, yeah, I, and the bottles of Chardonnay. That makes uh, no <laughs> sense. Yeah, they, they, they wanted to test you. you I know. The plane was sitting you're not letting back. me in. Uh, oh, that's oh, there was a lot of there were a lot of drunk people returning to Sydney on that flight. <laughs> a lot of people had spun on their heel, gotten on, and even the staff were like, "What can you do?" And we're like, "Well, oh. good point. What can you yeah, do?" Can you hey, do? hey Tom, have you had COVID yet? No, I haven't had the privilege. But uh, I, <laughs> you're I, one of the I few. Getting it, well, I want to get it over and done with, to be honest. And <laughs> uh, it'd be nice to get it done, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah, it's just yeah. you know, we're just moving through it rather practically. But yeah. Yeah. We, we, we'll haven't been, yeah. we haven't even been we haven't even had a test over here yet. None, none, none of yeah. us. Yeah, no, no, my wife had one tested. a couple of weeks ago, but mm. that was it. Yeah, it looked uncomfortable. Yeah, I know. I do often read the uh, West Australian. It's very funny when you're panicking over 12 cases. But you'll be okay. <laughs> no, everyone's a free fall, free fall, big time. Oh, the panic buying! It was in middle of the year when we had the we had the uh, peel and uh, anyway the whole yeah. the whole we had state a was three locked day down. shut down. I, I, told, I, I told this on on air, but um, just recently I was at um Coles and over here, and um, I know the staff there, and one of the staff members come out and goes, "Oh, Nathan, what? I'm just giving the heads up. The mince cage is coming out." <laughs> <laughs> the mints are locked up in a cage. <laughs> they would bring it out what? like an armoured vehicle. It's a mint locked away like all the plain packaging cigarettes now. Who <laughs> <laughs> you knows what two, mints can do? There was two armed guards next to it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh. Oh. Anyway. Everyone should watch Hard Quiz. Hard quiz. So Don't good. care what Brian says. What does he know? It's so, and uh, the uh, special subjects this week, Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Project Mercury Space Program, Lawrence of Arabia, and the 60s comedy, Get smart. It really does. It's quite the spectrum, isn't it, Tom? It really is a spectrum. Yeah. You are right. Hey, Tom, <laughs> Sean wants to come on. Would, would the category soups I like be allowed? <laughs> uh, yeah, he could come on with soups you like. That, that'd be fine. I'd be happy to have you on. I'll take that. Um, we do have celebrity editions of Hard Quiz. Oh, he's not a celebrity. So. Yeah, I know, you, you, your profile's only Perth-based. So <laughs> you'll have to be a regular contestant, yeah. I'm afraid, John. I uh, know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you're a pleasure. We, oh, that's we might get troubling. a spike in the ratings in Perth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, exactly. right. you need right. it. That's yeah. right. Oh, you need oh, it. Right. <laughs> no, they don't. It rates very it well. It rates very well. Yeah, you're very, very well. Very well. well. Mm, that's sarcastic. Hard quiz yeah. season yeah. seven. Yeah, Premiers sure. tomorrow at 8 p.m. on <laughs> ABC TV, or as Sean calls it, Channel 2. Channel 2, guys. And you can check it out on our I think the winners are on after it. Anyway, my favourite show. All right, all the best for the future. Love you, Wag Tom. Tom. Right, thank you. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If, it's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. I don't play many um, video games ever. Do you? Do you go through a gaming phase? Are you asking uh, me? Double Dragon, obviously. <laughs> um, I play Wordle. Oh, yeah, you're talking about <laughs> down, down playing pennies in the arcade. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as far as you can, um, staying at home and being a yeah. gamer, no, the kids are still going hard at Fortnite, having a bit of a dip at NBA Jam at the moment as well. Yeah, right. Are they doing it safely? Yes, there are concerns. A few times I have to yell out because um, they're getting a bit loose, you know, really jumping up and down and... 
you know, wrestling each other. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Some dangerous stuff. Um, uh, we've come across, guys, um, the world's first documented VR-related stress fac- fracture. VR-related. Stress fracture. Yes, a German gamer has broken his neck. <laughs> oh, Bob doing virtual reality. But a stress fracture. <laughs> so stress fractures are like recre- repeated micro trauma yeah. leads to it. Yeah. The doctors claim the 31-year-old's repetitive movements to the neck um, are being damaged before part of the bone finally cracked. The man went to hospital after experiencing a piercing pain. Stop texting, Sean. <laughs> I was, I was Do you reckon that was my phone? Yes, it was your phone. I was getting a photo of me doing VR. Oh. I just want to send that mood. photo. And that, and that's not VR. <laughs> And that's not where the joys are. What, what I was looking at was... The V is supposed wow. to stand for virtual, Sean. <laughs> the man went to the hospital after experiencing a piercing pain in his shoulders. X-ray scans later revealed the man had fractured his C7 neck vertebrae, which sits near the base of the neck above the shoulders. Correct. Natalie, pretty full on. This guy has broken his neck playing a video game. Sitting still, <laughs> essentially. When you're doing VR, though, you've got the goggles on. So if you're doing a boxing match, you really think you're there. And so you don't know where you're moving to. So I can see there are perils to being involved in VR yeah, but in particular. There. Yeah, but he's sitting there. He's sitting there. He's sitting. Yeah. The hu- okay. <laughs> he's broken his neck sitting. <laughs> can we edit that part that I did? <laughs> <laughs> Say that question out. Oh, jeez. I mean. <laughs> not when I stuffed up my knee, you remember? When I got out of my bed because my Apple Watch update was done. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We heard from uh, Nathan about an injury. This is a broken neck from yes. VR. Now, not because they fell or smashed into a wall. No. Just repeated slight movements yep. of his head. Yep. A Crazy. German gamer has broken his neck, fractured his C7 neck vertebrae, um, and it's believed to be the world's first documented um, case of VR-related stress fracture. <laughs> and then Nathan did his knee getting out of bed. Because my Apple Watch update was done. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't make it better. <laughs> I think that's the leading cause of the injury. Apple Watch update. Readable. So we are talking about those injuries you've sustained, but in a really kind of lame way. Uh, Stacey is in Baldivis. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, Hi Stacey. Stacey. What happened? I, over the Christmas break, I thought it would be a good idea to sunbathe outside in my backyard. So I'm lying flat down, just soaking up all the sun, and the flies were annoying me. And so if you can imagine, I'm lying flat down on my stomach and there's flies all over me and I try to ninja swat a fly on the back of my leg and I turned around so fast that my neck, the back of my neck just pulled stiff. <laughs> and it's only in that position for like a good like 10 minutes. I was like, ah, this is so cool. <laughs> Swatting um, flies. Yeah, Swatting for flies off her butt. Week, yeah. yeah, for yeah. a whole week, my neck was just, Stiff and sore. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you have to explain to people? Because people go, "Oh, yeah. gee, look what at happened? Me. What happened there?" Yeah, yeah my husband thought it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, Stacey, when we were down in um, uh, Margaret River over the Christmas break, my f- my dad fell off a veranda feeding magpies, <laughs> <laughs> which of course everyone is really concerned about. <laughs> Mum sat there and pissed herself laughing. You can check it out on my Instagram. It's so funny. So, in my Christmas post, a video right at the end. Mum could not stop laughing. Dad was bleeding. Prof- Profusely. He could have broken his ribs. It was a big fall. <laughs> and um, mum just sat there and mum was on the phone to dad's sister, Auntie Christine, and she was just sitting there just both laughed at him. <laughs> and like dad's at the age now where if he falls from yes. a certain height, he'll just go like, like power. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. Ben's in Seville Grove. Hello. Hello. It's, um, yeah, my step uh, when she was at work once, she um, was reaching to put a piece of paper into one of the paper trays that you get at your desk. Yeah. yeah. And um, all of a sudden, she felt a pain in her shoulder. So yeah. a couple of months down the track, she ended up having to have a full surgery on her shoulder to... <laughs> because she was lifting a piece of paper. One yeah. sheet of paper. Jeez, Ben. Yep. What was she made out of? Uh, I don't know. But uh, a bit of deer now, so it's all good. Put his shoulder in the That movement. Oh, ow. No, no, it doesn't hurt. Um, God, imagine okay. if she had to pick up a book, she would have been dead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you say pick up a book all the time, Nathan. It's I a dangerous thing that to would do. Kill her. Thanks, Ben. Sheridan's in Hammond Park. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great, Sheridan. Sheridan. Now, what's the injury and how lame <laughs> was it? Um, I was about five minutes into one of my shifts 
when I was working in hospitality a few years ago and I bent down to pat a dog and I dislocated my knee. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse than Nathan's getting just, out of bed to check just his bent, You just bent down. I go, wait, before we laugh at it, before we yeah. laugh at it, how, how short was the dog? Yeah, what Did sort of you dog bend was right it? down? Was it a miniature uh, chihuahua? What was it? No, it was like a golden retriever, but it was Oh, okay. Well, that's so ridiculous. Like, it was sitting on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it wasn't standing up. Oh, yeah, but even sitting no. pretty <laughs> small. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean. Married at first sight, <laughs> kicked off last night, and it's it was back. in fine form. Um, it started with uh, the uh, appearance of a young man who mm-hmm. was 25 years old. Yes, he, he doesn't was, really no. want to get married, does no, he? No, he didn't. 25 years old. Are we talking about L? Thinks he is so the best looking person there. He loves his legs. Yeah, loves his. No, no, no. His legs. Uh, is his weird. legs love him. Quality, <laughs> okay, he yeah, said, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. They said, do you have any concerns about yourself? And he said, oh, I think it might be my legs. But apart from that, he thinks he's pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> never had a girlfriend. Never had a girlfriend. But you're going on married at first sight. Never yeah. been in a relationship. But no. going up married at first sight. And, and it's not because he's shy, or timid. He loves him. Self. Oh yeah, and there's no there's no shortage of action. There's just been no relationship, right? What are you going on, love? Yeah, uh, I, and I know that you know. I know. Well, we, we all know, know what married at first sight is. We know what it is. But it's a know, way to find true least, love, Nathan. At least loosely stick to the premise of the show <laughs> of somebody that actually has been trying for a while and possibly yes. had a couple of failures. <laughs> yes. Not someone new off the blocks that obviously inter- isn't interested in anyone but themselves. Yeah, I read an article that none of these people are getting paid. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Just and do then they come off of the show, like that guy in the article who was on uh, one of the other seasons, yeah, and complain about how raw deal, the raw the deal they got. You, so you, you know what you're signing, signing up for. for. It wasn't you're just series. angry because you didn't get as many Instagram followers <laughs> as what you thought you were going to get, to be honest. So um, last night, though, it was all about a couple, and that was Brent and Tamara. Now, Brent had been working over in Dubai. Dubai. And he created this whole entertainment industry sort of business. Had heaps of photos with uh, stars around yeah, the place. Yeah. Will it Smith was one of them. Crumbled due to COVID. Uh, of course. Yeah, and then he had to move back to Melbourne and, you know, and, and sort of... It, it, we didn't really find out what he was doing there. So his new bride, Tamara, bit judgy, she was asking what he does um, for a living and mm-hmm. then he said, I work with, with nightclubs. She thought he said that he worked in a nightclub. Yeah, as a barman or something or so security. So she did not like that. She asked for clarification, which he told her about his Dubai business and what he created and then she was okay with that. Because she but likes an entrepreneur. Later on when they're sitting down at the table, so there's um, Tamara and Brent and there's um, uh, there's Brent's Brent, best, best mate man. who you'll hear in this um, and um, also her best friend that were there as well. Um, Brent decided to pose a question about her judging his career to so what happens if I end like if I worked at a toy store? Would you not want to talk to me? Well, if that's your goal is just to stay in a retail job for the rest of your life and not progress, and so that, if someone that's, needs money but they have no other way of getting it, that's that's fine. Good on them. That's just not me. For where I'm going, that doesn't meet my lifestyle. So we just wouldn't get along. So you feel like someone who worked in retail would be a step down for you? As bad as this is, I did date this one guy. He actually did work in a retail shop. And I was embarrassed to sort of like introduce him to people because I was like, well, he doesn't really compliment me very well either. Like that doesn't compliment who I am. I know what I want and what I deserve. And so it would be strange to date a guy that worked in a toy store. And I'm definitely not apologetic for that. (laughs) Quick question. What does she do? Um, she's uh, she's oh, a, a boss she lady talked. in an office, basically. Yeah. She like she was the boss of the whole thing, but it's like <laughs> uh, we can clearly yeah. see you're not with your fake phone call. But she's I just want to middle management. talk about her <laughs> and best. her slamming retail. Mm. She, after last night, will never be able to walk into a shop <laughs> I know. again. Who does she think works in these places and where she likes to go be, shopping? She'd be the worst one, right? Yeah. She'd be the person that judges people that work in retail. And I've, I think, have you guys worked retail? I've I worked n- retail. I never it have, is a hard slot. Yeah, of course it is. You're, You're on your feet all day. And also, you need really special skills. <laughs> um, yeah, you you've mm. got, you've got need yeah. special skills. It's re- You're going to be great at communication. Mm. You have to have the right temperament for Patience. that job. But she'd be one of those people that slams someone for working at yeah. retail. But then if she found out that someone that she knew, knew uh, someone worked at Louis Vuitton or something like that, oh, yeah. she'd suck up their ass Big to try time. and get a discount. 
That's what she'd be like. Mm. And then think about the poor people in toy stores <laughs> that work in toy stores. It's like, how good is that? Also, what a great what, job. How dare she say that? <laughs> yeah, how dare she say that? Poor little toy, toy store stores. workers. A like man forced. working in a toy store. Can you not, can you not think of a more delightful situation? I know. Like, imagine it's that. Full of joy. Ellie, a young strapping man that works in a toy store. We would take him in a heartbeat, wouldn't we? <laughs> sure. The two of us. <laughs> you get him during the week, days and I get him on the weekend. <laughs> He's going to be busy. Jesus, <laughs> I'd suggest he'd be knackered by the time he gets to you, Nath. <laughs> Pretty full on. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so we're... Stop being so judgmental about what people do. Oh, I mean, that's job snobs. Job, job snobs. Job snobs are the worst. I will take... I, I'm going to say I'll probably take any job. Yep. I'll, take it. I'll probably say I'll take any man. <laughs> <laughs> would you take would, is, is there, there's I, no right, Working in retail is not a deal breaker. That's no. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Are they a nice person? Are they kind yes. hearted? Are they generous souls? That's all you look for. Yeah, good call, Nat. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. We asked the big questions on this show, and the big question was Are there any men who work in toy stores that listen to us? Because we respect you and your career. Um, it don't matter what Tamara from MAF says. <laughs> Hello, John from Pearsall. <laughs> How are you going? Good, Good job, John. Sean. Uh, do you work in a toy store? Yes, I do. I work in a Jingle Up toy store. <laughs> do John? You, do you own it, John? No, no. I just work on the floor. That's oh, exactly yeah. what we're looking for, someone yes. that just works in a toy store. John, what is your current relationship status? Uh, I'm married with two kids now, but I've been there for about eight years. Yep. So on the second year that I was working there, Mm -hmm. I was dating this girl, really, really pretty girl. Yes. uh, For about three weeks. Uh, She didn't know where I worked because it was only like uh, ringing and talking and stuff. Yes. It was really pretty and I was so happy with everything. (laughs) Yeah. Then uh, I booked a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, That Saturday morning I booked it. I rang. I said, we're going there. Yeah. It was all happy. Yeah. Then she happened to come into the store. Yeah. And she saw me, turned away, walked out the door, <gasps> and never seen her again. Oh, oh John, what an animal. What and what now she's on maths. I still she, went to dinner. I maps. still went to dinner. On your own. And I had a lobster. Oh, oh John. That we, is so sad. Why did she walk out the door? Were you holding a big box of Lego or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was stocking the um, Dorothy the Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> He's just That's playing with the doll. Yeah, basically. but how was he stocking it? <laughs> <laughs> he had a big Barbie camper van ready with a bowl on it. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Time to catch up with our good friend Stevie Butler who writes all the fantastic articles for oh, the West he's Australian. He's so amazing. No. <laughs> Famous he's a freak. He's my uh, favourite. Good morning to you, Stephen. Uh, I say that to myself in the mirror every morning, Nathan. Yes. Hi, Stephen. And you're right. Hi, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, mm. Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, no, it's uh, good to be here. And oh, great. Plenty going on in sport, isn't there? Yeah, yes. I wanted to ask you, we did speak about it amongst ourselves this morning, um, Justin Langer and the fact that um, Cricket Australia aren't exactly throwing that four-year contract in front of him at the moment. What an absolute disgrace! Isn't it? Even I know. I, I that, even I, I know that's stupid. I can't really imagine how, in any other sport, this would even be a conversation. He's won a T Twenty World Cup that no one yes. thinks thought Australia could win. He's won an Ashes series four nil. He's the Wisdom Coach of the Year. He's just been inducted in the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame <laughs> for his uh, services in playing and coaching. And they don't want to renew his contract. You've got to be kidding. What sort of Two bit operation are we talking about here that <laughs> couldn't organise a chook raffle properly? Like, like well, they got all the fixtures wrong. I would, yes. I would, I yes. would like to, I would like to sit. I'd like to sit in on the meeting where they're discussing this and just mm. work out well, what's the other thing on the list they're needing. Yes. <laughs> well, like, there's okay. clearly a couple of players which we kind of talked about. Clearly, some of them are holding a bit of a, uh, a bit of dissent. Yeah, a bit of dissent against um, Justin. Well, I wrote in the Sunday Times a couple yep. of weeks ago in a yep. column that when the tail is wagging the dog, that's when the mange sets in. Yeah. And the mange is setting in. They're a basket case financially. Mm. They couldn't get, find a way to come over here and make some money at Optus Stadium this year. And they can't be fit to appoint a bloke who they've asked to change his style, which he has. He delegated more. And then all of a sudden he wins everything known to man. <laughs> and they can't see a way through to actually reappoint. It's the, it's the most despicable thing I've seen for a long time. And, it's, and it reflects very poorly on the horrible lack of leadership that has sent Cricket Australia into becoming close to a financial basket case in recent times. God, oh, Stephen, mm. you're holding back at any stage there. <laughs> no, I just, I just think it's a disgrace. I just, 
you know, what more does a bloke have to do? And then you get all this. What, what Cricket Australia have allowed by not making this decision to extend his contract is the stupid peddling of inaccuracies, which Cricket Australia had to defend this morning. You know, uh, reports that he had to reapply for his job, which are yeah. completely not true. Okay, I had that. Um, <laughs> I had that in the news, so that's good. <laughs> and, and I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really disappointed in some of the senior players. If, if they are serious about things, yeah. they should come out and say, we've just had the best summer we could possibly have had and part winter. Uh, let's reappoint our coach because he's doing a brilliant job. Now, not one of them have come out and said that, and they're a disgrace for doing it too. And if they can't sit there and be spoken to harshly as a professional athlete and they need to be mollycoddled mm. and chucked in the cotton wool yeah. and pampered because they, they're... they're their rider in the change room isn't correct or something like yeah. that, then they need to go. They should have a word to the hockey ruse who played under Rick Charlesworth to find out what it's like to really have a hard-nosed coach, shouldn't they? Well, now, you know, on that, it, it, like, some of them didn't like that. Yeah. But guess what? Every single time at a big tournament, they're playing for a gold medal. They're pretty they? happy World to collect the medals. Gold medals. Yeah. Yeah. And although maybe yeah. they should talk to any of Sean, Sean's children's teams that he's coached <laughs> and work out <laughs> what having an absolute <laughs> a-hole in charge is. <laughs> Imagine, imagine some of these cricketers walking into the change room and seeing Mick Mulhouse standing there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. mate. Ross Lyon would tore, yeah. tear strips off you, mate. Like, Ross Lyon yeah, would... Come on. You know, come on. Yeah, the, yeah in, footy, in footy. Nothing. But I but I wonder, because the um, the captain usually, back in the day, you know, it's all settled in with the yes. captain for so long in cricket, used to um, call the shots, and the coach was just there as a, I don't know, a bit of window dressing for a long time. Justin stepping into this role... He's taking the coaching job as a coaching job, and he's the leader, and he's the boss, and yeah. this is the way it needs to play out. And I wonder if that has put a couple of the older um, players out. The one more, is out of yeah. And and news limited journo Malcolm Con, who I've known for a long period of time and like and respect, but I don't like what he's been doing in in this situation and on this issue because he's even he's just some of the stuff he's written this morning is just not right in his in his story, and and it needs to be corrected. I mean. To say that Justin Langer, if anyone who knows Justin Langer remotely, to say that he would have sat back and let his assistant coaches do all the work, oh yeah, it's just it's just. But they were asking him to delegate to as well. True. You know, they were. Well, there was criticism that okay. he didn't delegate, so then he delegates, yeah, yeah. and now he's criticised for that. Like you can't win. But they're suggesting that he sat back and yeah. all the assistant mm. coaches did all the work. What a complete load yeah. of nonsense that is! Just you know, completely false, falsifying the truth. And yeah. You know, I, I just think people who are standing around and saying Justin Langer should read the room and and move on, what? well, I'll, I'll say to them, they should read the score sheet yes. and read what he's actually just yeah. achieved. Oh. You know, one of the big misinjustice there is actually reading an article and it being incorrect, Steve. That's really, <laughs> like, that blows me away for journalism. <laughs> Does, well, doesn't it doesn't, doesn't help our cause, does it, Shorty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like this because when Stephen's upset, I'm upset. Yeah, that's of right. Of course, the whole of Palmyra's yeah. upset. Mm. That's the thing. I'll think, I'll, I'll think of something fun for a moment. I must la- last week when I was on air with you for the first time this year, yeah. and I got off, and my little eight year old daughter asked me who I was just on the radio with, and I said, Nathan, Nat, and Sean. And she said, You're on the radio with Sean the Sheep? <laughs> oh. Sean the sheep, son. Oh, same hair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that was my response. I, yeah. <laughs> Ridiculously far from the truth. No, <laughs> Steve, did you do school? You did school drop off, mate? Did that start yes. yesterday? Yes, it did. Uh, back there, and they wanted to actually wear their masks today, even though they don't have to yet. But yes, um, that's a bit different. But no, they're pretty excited. It's always the first day of school is good, isn't it? You just get. Yeah. Them to school, you come home and you go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Straight down to Dan Murphy's. Yeah, oh, we know that that's right. <laughs> Leopold. Oh, the uh, half price Tuesdays. Yes. Steve, we really appreciate your time, mate. We we uh, concur with you too on the Justin yep. Lang oh, situation, yes, mate. Up. But anyway, keep up the hey, good mate. work and we'll see you soon, eh? Maybe they're channeling the bloke who just died in the last couple of days, uh, John Banner. Who played Sergeant Schultz in Hogan's Heroes? Oh. The Cricket Australia board are saying, "I see nothing. I see nothing." One of the great Wait, shows, yeah. yeah. Hogan's yeah. Heroes, and if you can also always sign off with the death. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Oh, I just want to quickly talk about those bloody protesters yesterday yeah. on the freeway, like. It was only a small number of them too, and oh. they brought so many people to a halt and and affected so many people's no, days. Um, can they get? Sorry, Nath, um, yeah, no. I'll, I'll let you go. No, no, no. You ask the question. You oh, need to well, ask. here is the question for oh, you, God, friend. Um, are they going to get uh, done by the cops? Are they going to get some? They serious were taken away. By no, the police. they were taken yeah. away. But who knows? You know what I mean? If you're standing on the bloody freeway, one one of the the biggest things I know that you're not supposed to do is be out of your car on the freeway. Yeah. And these people have done that, right? Now, my thing is. You're so 
bloody selfish. You do not know what is happening in each one of those cars. Right. Somebody's kid could be having an allergic reaction and they're trying to get yeah. them to hospital. Somebody's would be job peanuts. could be in jeopardy. Somebody might have been on their way to a job interview yep. for the job that is going to make their career. Yep. And you guys, this pissy little group of idiots, yeah. are there protesting their rights for whatever. I don't even care what you're protesting. Yeah, they were anti-vaxxers protesting because the mandates oh. kicked in yesterday. And you yeah. know what? If you want to protest about that, do it on your own yeah. time and don't get in people's way. Yeah, that's right. Do not do it. Agreed. 98% of people in WA have had their first jab, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 97, 98, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that means that there are a it's minority It's a tiny group, percentage. And I'm yes. okay with you protesting about what your rights have been because yeah. we all deserve oh, that, yeah. that thing. And Power I'm 100% you. behind you, Nathan. Yeah. Do it. At, go to Parliament House. Yeah. Yes, Do it that's there. right. Don't get in anyone's way. Exactly. And you know what? Don't hurt anyone. This Don't is, let the car tyres down. This is the thing that gets me about this, right, is that it's you, uh, um, <laughs> if you're protesting about the mandates and all that sort of stuff, and you know what, It's it's if, if that's what you want to do, like we said, you protest, yes. you know, if you are adamantly against it, that is your decision. I'm not going to say anything on that. But you, let's talk about perception. You're already perceived by the public as being selfish. Yeah, that's for not, right. For not um, uh, doing things for the greater good. Yeah, that's right. And, and then and you do public- Something health. like yeah. this, which is just so fully selfish, yeah. of holding up all these people and not knowing what their situation because is. Because you're it not does getting not your way. Your cause. It's a tantrum. So somebody that could see your point of view will not be swayed by no. actions like this. No. And the government's not going to change their mind because yes. you held up the traffic. All you're doing is inconveniencing a bunch of people that you don't know. And hopefully copying a big fine for doing so. Yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. So. I would imagine so. I swear. All if right. you're on the freeway. Hey, don't swear, man. Don't we're, swear. You know, if you're on the swearway. If you're on the swearway. If you're on the swearway. It would have been the swearway yesterday. If you're on the freeway yesterday and you had a bull bar, I wouldn't have run down, but I would have been nudging. <laughs> oh, people would have been. Yeah. <laughs> the temptation would have been, been just very slowly high. nudging them out of the way to get to what I needed to get to. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I'm bobbing into Tiffany's today oh. um, to pick up. You're having breakfast. Necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Great reference, Sean. Thank Very you. literary. Well, we are a breakfast show. That's all. Oh, right. Sean's got heaps of breakfast. It does break. make sense. <laughs> um, uh, to pop in and get a necklace for my door, uh, my, my mate's daughter's um, 18th birthday. And um, Nat, tell everyone quickly what happened to you the last okay, time you were in so Tiffany's. Okay, so this is quite a while ago, but um, I got given a uh, voucher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I went in there and I picked out a bracelet and I used the voucher, but and then I had to pay on top of that because um, the voucher didn't cover the entire cost of the bracelet. Of course. And so when I... And I did that and paid and everything and left. And then the next day I get a phone call from, like a voicemail from Tiffany saying, oh, we undercharged you by $50. Can you come back in and pay it? And she did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I thought you did. No. Oh, my God. That's why I've, I've never been this, back. I've lived this world <laughs> thinking that you did. No, I didn't pay it. I'm I like, was going to say. That's outrageous. That is never outrageous. It's outrageous so funny. It's outrageous because so they funny. made an error. Like, I remember we talked about it. It was hilarious. It, unbelievable. No, I never paid it. Oh but I, I similarily <gasps> haven't been back. <gasps> what if I got there and they say you work with Nathan. Natalie. Where's yes. what if they yes. charge me an extra then fifty? You have to pay it. Oh jeez. And that and that would be right. Oh, no. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Well, we're waiting to hear from the Australian Cricket Board at the moment whether Justin Langer's contract will be extended. They How are saying not be. Nathan, they're saying from the East Coast that he's had a couple of meetings with Nick Hockley, the CEO, and that they're suggesting he may need to reapply for his own position. I, I, know, okay. I mean, I'm sorry. All you do is just go, ta da. Bring There's me, bring me yes, the personalised package. Bring me the person's CV that's better than what he's done. <laughs> And oh, turn, sorry, yes. someone else is just a little bit less but has had five years' experience at McDonald's. Maybe <laughs> maybe just show them a video of Australian cricket before the Justin Langer era. Well, I just heard it in the news that. before. So Mark Taylor said that um, clearly they've got Justin Langer for the position because they were in they need um, to disarray, turn right? Yep, so it was a discipline, hot mess. Yes. Um, you know, he's, he's a great uh, Australian, so he put him in place and he was thinking, well, maybe his job was done for them, to, him to be able to right the ship. But that doesn't mean you take the job off the person. Also, who's better? Who else is who else is throwing their hat in the ring? Well, clearly there's a couple of the Australian cricket players who have not been happy with the way he goes about um, his coaching, which is um, yeah. he's a really disciplined guy. Yeah, um, and it's all about and integrity. And he pushes people. Yeah, yeah, I do have a problem with that too. Okay, <laughs> but, okay, but that just seems like you're pandering down to the snowflakes. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, you, do, you know, I didn't get an award. I didn't get yeah. patted on the back right He was enough. mean to me. Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it feels like they're, they're treating Justin as a fixer, one of those political fixers that comes yeah. in and fixes something and then Cleans leaves the so that the politician can come in and take over. That's what it seems. Yeah, yeah, wholeheartedly, Nate, but I... He, he once again runs on the board. He, he's already uh, proven that he yes. um, can lead this team to great victories, which they've had in the last year or so. Yep. Before then, I understand that he put a few nose, noses out of joint, but that's what happens in any business. If a new boss comes in and yes. says, this is the way the ship needs to sail, we go on this way, and if, whoever's not on board, see you later. Uh, and at this stage, uh, he's done a bloody good job yeah. on paper. You still have to have the backing of the players, obviously, or your employees to make sure that everything goes okay. But um, they look pretty hopeful. happy when they won the Ashes. Yeah, you know he, what I mean? When they won the World Cup. The, the captain, Nick, uh, Pat Cummins, will get behind yeah. him, and that will be the difference. So, how many is, of the team? Oh, sorry, what was the percentage of the team? Do we, do we ever get couple, numbers? It's no. only a couple. Because no, they won't put their name to it. There's just grumblings and leaking things to the press. Right, so, there's literally like two or three. Two? Three? Oh, th- yeah, it was One a couple that were quite strong. Yeah. But I don't know how many were um, disgruntled at any Not one everyone stage. likes everyone. No. No, but... but Especially but, the person that's telling you what yes. to do. But if at the end of that you get the results that you're striving for, then the proof's in the pudding, I mean, surely. look at us here at Nova. We're doing really well. We can't stand David McCann. <laughs> Is he yeah, the chances of him hearing this right now is zero. That's rule with an iron and that's fist. That's why he doesn't ever listen. He's just <laughs> he never listens. Integrity's not a problem with him, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not one of his buzzwords. Uh, but yeah, we're hopeful that Justin's contract will be um, because because organized my at some question stage. stands: who else is in the picture? Who else could be the Australian coach? Uh, is there anybody else? I think it's Andrew McDonald, who's the assistant coaches there. Who? Well, yeah, he played um, a good level of state cricket. He actually played a few games for Australia. I remember him playing a ODI. Few oh, games. Sean, we've Justin all played Langer. a few good games for Australia. <laughs> Doesn't mean we can all do what JL's done. God. It, yeah, it's a real tussle at the moment, though. <laughs> yeah. and, and Justin, being the person he is, he'd be determined to be able to see out yeah. a proper contract. That There were suggestions as well that they were going to offer him like a, a short-term thing. What? Say for the next year, we'll contract you for the next year, 18 months. But he's looking for a He's going to end up know, coaching England or something, isn't he? Isn't That's what's going to happen. If they don't sign him, he'll go somewhere else because he's a hot commodity. Yeah, yeah, and he'll do particularly well as we Of course know. he will. God, mm. just he must feel so insulted right now. Yeah, I, I think he would be, no. Oh. Would you walk... Okay, here you go. So okay, if they're I'm insulting ready. you that way, would yeah. you just go, buggy, I'm not yeah. going to... Oh yeah, but I'd wait until I'd wait until they were about to offer it to me, and then yes. they and then they dis, uh, disregarded everybody else, and they, they so they put all their eggs in yes. my basket, yep. and then I just jump on just the basket when they hand you the piece of paper, you just push it <laughs> and back the again. Eggs, yeah, like yeah. That. Oh, the eggs, basket. Like that. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Slide it back across the table, oh, yeah. and then tell them to shove it somewhere yeah. really painful. And then you're like moonwalk away, and then go and work for England for double the money. That's right. Yeah. Pound strong at the moment. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Uh, good luck to JL. We love you. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. Good In the morning. studio, good morning. it's always an adventure. The one and only Kate Walsh <laughs> okay. joins us. Okay. Okay. Know each other more and Next more. Next shirt and mask up. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's great advice. Great advice. Kate, you're doing Mary Stewart. Oh, yeah. I am. Yeah. 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 Well, well, actually, stage. Caroline Brazier is play, playing the title role, mm. Mary Stewart. Yeah. She's reprising it from the Sydney Theatre Company production, and we're super um, – she's incredible. Well, it's going to be. I'm playing Queen Elizabeth. Yes, you probably guessed by my outfit today. Absolutely, <laughs> it's, it's screaming queen. Well, my <laughs> Queen Elizabeth is known for wearing Daisy, Daisy Dukes. So, <laughs> yeah, Katie's rocking the Daisy Dukes combined with a long sleeved, fully sequined shirt. Lovely. You got to bring a sequin I to Tuesday. <laughs> Yep. Morning. When, when I see you next to me, Kate, I look at myself and realise I must be um, really unhealthy. No. <laughs> she just looks like a different species. It's that Hollywoodness. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm feeling it. Just no, it's just because I'm at the beach all the time, you guys. Mm. I, I can't go to the it. beach. How are you go going with the 40 degree days that we've had over the last couple of weeks and stuff? Right I mean, it's fine. I grew up in Arizona, so this oh, is yeah. oh, no about how I grew up. It's a dry up. heat. Yeah, it's a dry heat. So <laughs> it's a dry heat. What's the hottest that Arizona gets? <laughs> Can we just put that on a mug? It's a dry heat. Or on a mask. Does, does, <laughs> does Arizona? <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Uh, does Arizona get like hotter than Perth, or is it well, like sort of on isn't par? It? It's about the same. Yeah, okay. in the yeah. summer it'll but be about no that. But there's no beach to go to. But there's no beach. Yeah, mm. just desert and 
somebody else's swimming pool that you please beg to go into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, did, absolutely. Did Good you, idea. Did you grow up with a swimming pool or were you the no. person begging? No, we didn't have yeah. no we didn't have, yeah. we didn't we didn't have money. <laughs> yeah. We we had a <laughs> poor man's swimming pool because um we got a second hand I think I think it was a second hand um was trampoline the, and then we put the sprinkler underneath it. Yeah. My mom would say fill up the bathtub and put your bathing suit on fill up the bathtub <laughs> with cold water and put your bathing suit on. That's sad. I uh, know that's, that's sad. Like pretty almost sad. that's kind of abusive. With yeah. your cities, isn't it? Because <laughs> then you'd go for when a slide little, down the slide of the tub and you'd always smack your head on the tap. <laughs> it's not. It was not good. I mean, it was little. It would be really weird if I was like 18. <laughs> <laughs> you invite your the friends tub. over to the pool. Yeah. <laughs> pool party. My house. No bombies. <laughs> no bombies. <laughs> you were a nat asked you before. the saddest thing ever. <laughs> I don't, yeah. my, my parents still throw on the uh, sprinklers out the front and get all the when the kids, the kids get, or, or, run around or my nephew yeah. nieces and run yeah, around. Yeah, that was like, good. Yeah, it did yeah. the trick. Did yeah. you grow up with air conditioning? We had a hum- the swamp. They called them a swamp cooler in oh, Arizona. Not, not, also, like not, humid, no. the humid one, that the did water. Nothing. Yeah. Oh, well, if it was humid, it was nothing. But yeah. if it was a dry heat, as yeah. you said, we were okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was just like there are the levels, you yeah. know, yeah. sprinklers. Then there's the above ground pool or the inflatable. Then the above ground and then the built in pool. Yeah. We had nothing. We didn't have air conditioning. We were in Kalgoorlie, so it's like a, yeah. It's like oh, that's a, right. A dry heat. Just in beer. <laughs> just in beer. Just in beer. Nathan didn't have Boys. a door. I didn't have a door. Didn't have a door. door. Room. You did it? No, and I didn't think it was actually possible. Um, because Stop. my dad, no, because I would say to my dad, "Can I have a door?" And dad would be like, "No." Like I'd ask him to build a robot, and I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, that it that can't be possible. done. It can't, it be, can't done. be done." And then it's not until I got older how I realised how easy it was for him to put a door on. <laughs> and like, I've never forgotten that. Like, and, and the worst thing is, Kate, my my bed when I was sleeping, it would face the, my my head would face the TV, and mum and dad would make me face the wall so I wasn't watching, watching TV. TV. Go to sleep, Nathan. Face the wall, so I'd it's face the, the wall. Doorway. The worst part is, Kate. I don't know. The wall was. Asbestos. <laughs> oh my god! So many triggers now. It's you're not like, cool. Can't see walls. It's not this cool. is why there's so many angles in this video. You're like, I can't really see a wall without a lot. like screaming. He keeps walking to the door too. It's like, who put that there? <laughs> Wait, why is there a door? Why are there doors? <laughs> Too many an, doors. I saw on Instagram. Um, uh, you've got a little video for um, Mary Stewart, which looks really, really great. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we're opening February 11th. God, I'm so you, excited, you, State Theatre. Just sitting around Friday night talking. Yeah, it's, just, it's yeah, so yeah, acting. Isn't oh it God, like you guys Friday. sitting around a table doing your table things? Yeah, so we were acting. doing. Yeah, so it was acting. very. That video looked like we really were. We just we just sit around looking at the script and analyzing. It. No, yeah. we were. That was from our table reads. Now we're in full rehearsals. We just moved it to the Heath Ledger Theater. Because before that, building. you were at uh, we well, PLC. PLC. Yeah. yeah, in their yeah. fancy theater. They have a We've been very talking a lot about theater. how fancy the private Usually schools rehearsal, are. Yeah, in a little room with tape. Yes, and we're in a proper theater. It's really an incredible <laughs> yeah. program. Like, what do they do here? I want to go see PLC's productions. Were yeah. you private school or public school? Public. She, she oh, thought that the, the bathtub yeah. was a swimming pool. Now. <laughs> 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 I thought maybe a pair of subtle money Look what she's wearing. Look what I'm wearing, for God's sake. <laughs> we picked her up from a truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> Someone stole half my pants. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a private school. 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 Yeah, no, we did. I've dreamed of private schools. I was always like, I think I'm doing really well in my English class. Yeah. Could I please? But no. Because mm. yeah. yeah. those girls had hats. Yes. Yeah. The, oh, the whole outfit, the whole thing here. It's just such a cultural, it's really yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, we had gang colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're <laughs> like, don't look me in the eye or I'll cut you. Yeah, you had to, you had to join several gangs to, the, to get to the canteen <laughs> safely. Yeah, we went to the whole, my goal, we're going to jail tonight, school. Take the earrings out, put the Vaseline in the ears, and then uh, good luck on your math. So they chuck yeah. you through the fence and they just lock the door behind you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it's like, it's for real. Best. Lunch time was just a leg of ham thrown over <laughs> into the quadrangle. <laughs> the kids had to fight for a chunk. So you're pretty tired at the moment just rehearsing, mate? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it turns out I don't like work. No, I'm kidding. I am tired, but it's it's an incredible show. It's a big show. It's a really, um, you know, uh, Kate Mulvaney, who's a Perth uh, yes. woman who is an incredible actor. Actress. No, okay. and she. What did you say? <laughs> said, did we you say sound like a name we've spoken to so. recently? No, but she's a very well established yes. sort of director and playwright and stuff. Yeah, isn't she? and yeah. actress. She's yes. in this. She adapted the play, and uh, it was a massive hit. in, in I think 2018, they did it at Sydney Theatre Company, and oh. so we're thrilled mm. to have it here with all. Um, 
Perth based actors yeah. except for me and Mel Camp. <laughs> well, you're Perth based. And, yeah, well, yeah, I'm Perth based. Yes. Yeah, but but it's it's an incredible show. Um, so you're doing an English accent. I am. Are I'm you good at try, it? I'm not going to do it right now. How's, so it, how's it going ask. though? Do you? It's challenging, but I think yeah. you're going to enjoy it. Do a lot of pigeons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Are no. you going full Cockney? Is that yeah. what we're aiming for? <laughs> Cockney. Oh, God. No. <laughs> I. No. I don't <laughs> the Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Podcast. Kate Walsh is in oh, a play called Mary Stewart at Perth Festival, the 9th to the 25th of February at Heath Ledger Theatre. It's going to be amazing. Go and check her out, Kate. Mm. You're watching the tennis. You. Um, of oh, course, yeah. Rafael Nadal and yeah. Daniil Medvedev. Yeah. Kept you yeah. going all night long. so much sweat on a man. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> that is oh, a great actually. question, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, have you ever seen that much sweat on a man? No, I have not. I have not. That was epic. The sweat and the match. I mean, wow. What Five an and a half hours. Yeah. That's a session. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, but I thought that uh, De- Daniil was a little, he was a little Salty. cranky. Mm. Little, little. Oh, do you feel sorry for him at all? Because no. that's the way I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. you know what, because no. you should, well, because the crowd were being pretty well, like, they horrendous were, yeah. to him. But there's something there's, there's something um, unlikable about <laughs> yeah. the way he reacts to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah? was a little, I think, yeah, I think he'll get better over the years with his... Uh, Maybe irritation and anger. Yes, I, th- I think it's his think? approach yeah. that, that put people yeah. off side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. We know you're much a, like mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you're a, a wonderful I'm, actress. I'm hated worldwide. <laughs> oh, can't wait for you guys to come see me in this play. Um, <laughs> do you ever do love sport? Love the world over. Yeah, you're gonna hear me talking like that. Uh, what? Say that sport? Again? Sport? Did you ever play sport? What, what's your sport? No, no, I. Oh yes, you're gonna laugh. Oh. Maybe you won't, but I, I did get a letter in it. In our high school, we get letters, you know, for yeah. Yeah. Ex- ex- excelling in certain... It was shot put. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shot put. You don't strike me as a... Really? When you I'm get a physically strong, strong, yeah. but yeah. no skill, no elegance. Yeah, I tried right. to, it's like I was born asthmatic. I can't run unless someone's <laughs> chasing me with a weapon. But you can I throw like, a big oh, tired. cannonball. Mm. Yeah. Strong, strong. Yeah. There was a yeah. teacher at our school that copped one in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, she was off work for ages. Oh, <laughs> why did you throw it, Sean? <laughs> Never the same again. Some guy just unloaded one. Some guy, hey. Don't say oh, after no. recess for having a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You get what you get. Now, oh. Kate, um, uh, great news in that um, uh, two more series of Emily in Paris. I now, know. How about is your that? character going to... She's got to come oh, back. Yes. Yeah. She's going to have that baby. That we baby's going to get out. Something's going to happen. Well, I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers up for the second season. Season, but the best part is right at the second at the end of the second season, right? The question is, you know, is Emily going to stay in Paris yes. or not? And we're pretty sure she is because it's called Emily, Emily in, in Paris. Paris. Yeah, it's two more series. series. Like, well, what will she do? So, <laughs> I love the show, but that is the worst cliffhanger in the world. <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. <laughs> so I want to go to um, when you're eating, like you you um you're eating that entire in, yes. series. Yeah, yeah I didn't pregnant. realize actually how much. How much food did you have to eat? On. Carrots and stuff. It was a lot of baby carrots, and that was my bitch. So it's really my fault that I, you know, I'm surprised I didn't oh, that turn slightly pitch. orange. I'm like, how about baby carrots? Yeah, just because they're so obnoxious and how many also, carrots were going in you? I don't. know. <laughs> that is such a <laughs> rude, rude. <laughs> rude. <laughs> just answer the question, but Kate. Mask up. <laughs> mask up. Um, I snacked quite a bit on that show. Yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't as fun as because it's all during COVID, so it was yeah. just everything was basically you know. Sterile. It was just. Strange. And then well, there wasn't there one where you were eating like a giant sandwich or something when you were watching the street performers. That were mine. What were you eating? Oh yeah, I was eating crap. Yeah, so, like sloppy crap. And how so many gross. times? How many of those did you have to eat? Uh, we did. Well, I, we faked it pretty well, so you could actually fake. That's what, how good oh, of an actor. Fake eating. Fake eating. Fake eating. Fake eating. Fake eating. Wow, okay. this is the craft. Yeah, that's you know, right. Really, that's you're learning the best so in the much. Yeah. Luckily, in Mary Stewart, I do not eat at all, so you won't have to see any of that. Any of that filth. Okay, how, many, lots of how many shows are you doing? You're We're starting doing, Feb 11? Yeah, we start Feb previews nine. on the 8th. We open on the 11th, I believe. Oh. Is that on the 11th, right? Well, on we've Friday. got the 9th. Oh, that's previews. That's okay, what it's my is. birthday, okay. the 9th. It's, oh, happy birthday. Yeah, Why don't you go to the play to celebrate? The yeah. I will. It's <laughs> up my alley. <laughs> um, we, we run until the 25th. So, yeah. yeah. So we do. And I think there's a couple of like matinees. What, every night? Seven shows a week, I believe we're doing. Oh, wow. So we have Mondays off, yeah. And then so a matinee or something. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Hey, yeah. what's that? There's a show they're advertising with you on the moment. Bad Judge? What's yeah, that? I heard what, about what, that. What, what Caroline is, actually told me what about that. What is happening? That. Um, 
I was like, I called my, literally called my lawyer. I'm like, am I getting paid for this? Um, they're <laughs> rerunning my show again, and I, or they're running it here. How which, long ago was, was only, that? I made it in 2015. Okay. 2014, 15, 15, right after, it was the first thing after, far, like after private, I produced it and started it. It was a really fun show, but only went yes. 13 episodes. So I guess they're showing it on t- Channel 9 here. Tune in. I know. And just send me five bucks if you can. <laughs> I mean, it's really desperate times. You see what, you see what this is. Oh, I'm starting wearing half an outfit. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get us some pants. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, Kate Walsh and Ben Put your Can't pants hate. out for Kate Let's get a trend <laughs> That's very good Guys, oh my god Well, yeah. as always, it's a pleasure oh, You're amazing yeah, You I are welcome here all day, anytime I'm sure you'd love me to stay No, we, no, we, we would, would love you to stay Come in more often, please I know, I want to Seriously Anytime What's your problem? <laughs> what is my problem? You know what I mean? We've been talking about it anyway Alright um, okay. Go see your play She's yes. amazing Watch her Mary brand Stewart. new series incredible. from 2015 <laughs> Bad judge. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> Emily in Paris streaming on Netflix. Yes. Check her out. Umbrella Academy as well. Check her out. Oh my gosh. Have you got anything else coming up, by the way, before we let you go that you have to skid the wheels for? Okay. I don't think so. I think that's it for now. Yeah, that's a, this is it. The play, and then Emily in Paris will start shooting that again. So, yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, I'm going to do another episode of Grey's. All right. Oh, oh nice. Nice. There I said it. There I said it. Okay. Okay. Extra yeah. hard oh, questions. God. Yeah. We cracked her in the end. You did. <laughs> Thanks, detective. <laughs> Thanks, detective. Yes. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.